What I'm now going to tell you is very simple. You probably think it would be more complicated, but it isn't. To store energy, we need a device called electrolyzer that are splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen is the energy carrier and that is stored in a cylinder. When there is a need for energy, hydrogen is fed from the cylinder to a fuel cell. Out of the fuel cell we have electricity and the byproduct thermal heat at 65 degrees C. Very suitable for warming buildings for example. And the electricity can be used by any consumer of energy like buildings, factories, schools and the charging of electric vehicles. The system can be used in any place because the fuel comes from the sun and wind. The most important thing is that we are storing renewable energy until it's needed. As simple as that. It is interesting that my project here in Sweden coincides with Greta Thunberg coming to the world stage with the young generation concern about the climate change. Around the world, scientists and engineers are developing a number of solutions. The main approach, of course, is to introduce the solar and wind power, which we will also need to store beyond immediate consumption or even seasonally. So, here come batteries and hydrogen. Initially, we were thinking of hydrogen as a fuel for passenger cars, but lately we are at the door of the entire hydrogen economy. As we can see now, it is all sectors of energy, residential as in this house, commercial, industry, and of course transportation, cars, trucks, trains, ships, and others. I would even imagine this technology is a model for the Moon or Mars Base Alpha. Today. We will be exploring the hydrogen house built by Hans Olaf Nielsen, the president of Nielsen Energy, and Martin Avetin, the marketing director. Welcome to the west coast of Sweden. You are currently in an off-grid house in Gothenburg. What used to be one man and his family's dream of being off-grid has developed into being the living lab for Nielsen Energy. We try out Scandinavia mostly, both fuel cell and hydrogen related technology. It's quite a unique house. We've had more than 6,000 visitors from all over, from MPs to students and from the general public alike. So do feel welcome and enjoy the tour. This is the place where we're going to start our journey exploring technology in the house. Here we have inverters that are bringing electricity from solar and then charge controllers that uh, store energy in the batteries. Let's learn more how all of these pieces of technology work together and with the house. All of the house energy needs are provided by the renewable energy from the sun. The house features photovoltaic rooftop made of 18 modules covering 140 square meters. The modules are arranged in four strings rated to produce 20 kilowatt. About 20 square meters of the roof are dedicated to the thermal panels, capable of producing up to 13 kilowatt of thermal power. On the south wall, PV modules mounted vertically capture the low angle sun in the winter time, approximately at 15 degrees over the horizon, generating up to 0.8 kilowatt. The west wall modules catch the late afternoon and evening sun, producing up to 2 kilowatt. The energy from the PV panels are stored in the house. Uh, one method is to, to charge the batteries, but uh, most of the excess energy from the summer season is stored as hydrogen, and that is produced by an electrolyzer. And uh, after that, the compressor moves the hydrogen to the energy storage. And then when the winter arrives, or when the sun is not strong enough, powerful enough, uh, hydrogen is used by the fuel cell that produces both electricity and heat. The power from the roof solar first comes into the SMA tri-power inverters, 
where each of them is controlling two strings approximately 10 kW each. The power then goes into the house at 230 volts or forth and back to the battery energy storage via the charge controllers. The power from the south and west walls is handled by a 3 kW SMA Sunny Boy inverter. It operates similarly to its larger brothers. The six SMA Sunny Island charge controllers handle the 48 volt DC circuit into connection to the battery pack, fuel cells and electrolyzer. Charge controllers replenish batteries and monitor the state of charge that triggers either the electrolyzer to discharge the batteries in summer or recharge from fuel cells in winter. This is a relatively large lead acid battery energy storage system that has several functions. Let's learn more about its role in the energy management of the house. The battery in the house is a very vital function that is operating 24-7. It delivers energy to the house during the nighttime and during daytime when the sun is not strong enough and also when the electric vehicle we are driving needs to be charged. But lead acid batteries have their own challenges. It would be interesting to imagine the advantages of transitioning to lithium-ion energy storage. Five years ago, when I installed batteries, I selected lead acid, and the main reason for that was the price. Lithium was at that time quite expensive, so the choice was easy. Today, we are installing lithium in systems we are designing and delivering to customers. The weakness with the lead acid is that they are capable for about 2,000 charging cycles and that is about five years in, in a system like this and that's not enough. When the days get longer here in Sweden, the house starts to generate more solar power than it needs, and we would like to store it in hydrogen. Hydrogen is produced from electricity and water in this electrolyzer by Green Hydrogen of Denmark. There are different types of electrolyzers. The most common is alkaline and PEM. And what you see here is a PEM version, and the capacity on this one is one normal cubic meter per hour. But as the days get shorter and colder, how much hydrogen will this house need? The electrolyzer produces 3,000 normal cubic meters during summer season, and 2,000 of those is used during the winter season to keep the house running. Our next technology in the house is the fuel cell by PowerCell, another Swedish company here in Gothenburg. In winter, when solar power is limited, 5 kW fuel cell will produce electricity and heat. Both are very important utilities in the house. The fuel cell you see here is a PEM version, and the main function of the fuel cell is to charge the battery storage. At the same time as it charges the batteries to a predefined state of charge, it also delivers thermal heat that is used for heating the house and uh, producing warm water. There is also another technology, a reversible fuel cell, that combines the function of electrolyzer in summer and the fuel cell in uh, winter. Is that something that could be found in your future projects? When this type of combined fuel cell and electrolyzer is proven and reliable, yes, we will use that as well. Uh, but until then, it will be separate fuel cells and electrolyzers. As hydrogen is produced by the electrolyzer, it is compressed silently using absorption technology. Let's hear more about this. The compressor solution used is a Norwegian design. It's a metal hydride compressor with new moving parts. And 
To power the compressor, only warm and cold water is needed. But of course, we need to store large amounts of hydrogen to last all winter and some for driving. What could be approaches here? The present system is powerful enough to produce hydrogen for the need during the winter season, but for a future expansion to a fuel cell car, I need to install more PV panels on the side walls of the house and also if necessary on the ground. Winters in Sweden can be rather cold. Around me is the house thermal energy system that heats up the house and melts the snow in the driveway. Let's learn how this has been put together and works with multiple heat sources. In Sweden, the most common way to heat buildings and houses is to use underfloor heating and warm water. In this house, it's also underfloor heating and the heat sources is from the fuel cell, from the heat pump and also the third option to use electric heater strips in the water tank. Another element in the thermal system is the heat pump, a popular solution here in Sweden. Let's look at its role in the house. The heat pump maintains the comfort in the house when the fuel cell does not deliver enough of uh, energy. At the end of our tour, we are coming to a place where all of this technology come together and made to work seamlessly with programming and set points. It would be interesting to learn how it has been adjusted and tuned over time. From day one, March 2015, we are collecting real data from the operation in this house and all that data is used to develop our own control system that optimizes function of the installations we are doing. The stored data from this house helps us to design robust systems using both fuel cells and batteries. Our control system is also designed to operate without any cloud services to make it robust and secure. Besides the house, you are set on delivering the hydrogen revolution in Sweden and around the world. That is what impresses me the most about the company, the inspiration and the future it is about to bring. So, what are these new projects? As I'm sure you realise, we are very passionate about bringing emission and CO2-free energy and mobility to the world. And we hope to be joined by many of you doing the same. Moving forward, we will be involved in on-site production of CO2-free hydrogen for mobility, but also uh, to make sure that schools and council houses and other applications will be provided with the same system solutions. Lastly, I'd like to underline the ability to also use container-based systems where you can actually have on-site production of hydrogen as well. For instance, for backup for vital applications. One of the completed projects by Nielsen Energy has furnished a 250 kilowatt solar system with electrolysis and storage for the Mariestad hydrogen station, which is to date one of only three in Sweden. The city of 24,000 people, located Midland, Sweden, aims to become the Swedish energy independent community with hydrogen, on road, and railroad applications. Nielsen Energy is currently engaged in bringing decentralized green hydrogen production to stationary and mobile applications around the world. 
bringing CO2-free energy that complements the current infrastructure. I would like to thank our host Nielsen Energy for opening the house for my students and viewers around the world.